You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is from Mountain Bellwort, Uvularia puberula. Mountain Bellwort becomes noticeable during mid-spring, when its flowers first bloom. Its range includes the mountain areas within eastern states of the U.S. If you know where the plant grew the previous year, you might find some of the first shoots out of the ground. Notice how the stem grows upward within a sheath. As the plant grows taller, the new leaves curl around the rising stem and flower buds before they unfurl. Here, the new leaves protectively enfold the emerging flower. Three flowers on a single plant. The stems are intertwined, so it's hard to tell which flower is attached to which stem. Each flower arises at a leaf axle and blooms at the end of a peduncle, the flower stalk. In this image, you can see the first flower blooming in the background, lower on the stem, and a second flower blooming higher up the stem from another leaf axle. This mountain bellwort is near its peak blooming stage. Notice the primary stem has split into two upper stems. The bell-like flower consists of six tepals, three sepals and three petals. The creamy yellow tepals have a green tinge closest to the peduncle. By tilting a flower upwards to look into it, we can see the six tepals and the three-part stigma within the center of the flower. After the flower blooms, its tepals shrivel. When we look very closely at the dying flowers, we can just glimpse a stamen, as well as the style with its three-part stigma. Look at this stigma. Each part has a fuzzy line. I bet that's to help move pollen down toward the ovary. Let's turn our attention to the leaves. When they first appear in the spring, they are somewhat narrow. As the weeks go by, they broaden in width. By midsummer, mountain bellwort's leaves are stiff and broadly oblong or elliptic in shape. The tips are pointed. The leaves are sessile. That means they do not have a leaf stalk or petiole, and the leaf blade is directly attached to the plant's stem. The underside of the leaf might be a touch lighter in color. Some field guides state the underside is glossy like the upper part of the leaf. This, of course, is a variable characteristic. The central prominent vein appears as a groove on the top of the leaf and raised on the underside. Notice the fine hairs along the central vein. Mountain bellwort leaves have parallel veins. Once again, notice the sessile leaf attachment. The parallel veins become more obvious as the leaf turns brown and dies. Leaves alternate along the stem. The primary stem forks at about the middle of the plant's overall height to create two upper stems. The upper stems have several angles or surfaces which highlight the twisting look of the stem. Also, notice the fine hairs on the stem's ridges. These fine hairs are the characteristic which distinguishes mountain bellwort from sessile-leaved bellwort. In contrast to the mountain bellwort stem, sessile-leaved bellwort stem is smooth and hairless. In nearly all other defining characteristics, both mountain bellwort and sessile-leaved bellwort look the same. As we study more images of mountain bellwort, look for those downy stems which are referred to as puberulent. Look at that! This plant has a young seed capsule. The capsule is quite small and still has its style and stigma attached. Here's the tip of the stigma with the white lines and the ovary which becomes the seed capsule. Let's back up just a bit and look at the entire reproductive package. Here's the flower's peduncle, the ovary, the style, and the stigma. 
and the downy stem. Another young seed capsule with the style hiding behind a leaf. In the next phase of development, the seed capsule loses its style and stigma. Gradually, the green seed capsule enlarges as the seeds grow within it. By late spring and early summer, you can find the green seed capsules hiding beneath the mountain bellwort leaves. As the summer season progresses, the seed capsules begin to turn color. Frequently, they start with one or more brown spots. This photo captures two seed capsules on a single plant. By looking down onto the top of the seed capsule, you can see that it has three sides. The seed capsule hides beneath the mountain bellwort leaves. You may have to tilt the stem to see them clearly. The brown spots become more numerous. Eventually, the entire seed capsule becomes brown. While the seed capsules are developing and turning from green to brown, the leaves are also changing color. They might develop brown spots, or the entire leaf might simply change color from green to yellow and then to brown. You may find groups of mountain bellwort plants, which include 12 inch to 15 inch tall older plants, along with nearby youngsters about four to six inches tall in midsummer, in late summer, during the fall months. This mountain bellwort has two seed capsules. A close view shows one of the three flat surfaces of the capsule. This seed capsule has dried enough to begin to split open. Here's another brown seed capsule. It looks like it might have mature seeds. Let's open the capsule by carefully pulling it apart. Well, it didn't break apart cleanly at the ridges, and yes, the seeds look ready. Look at the wisps of threads which connect the seeds to the interior ridges of the capsule. What an intriguing shape for the seeds, with a double ridge or crest partially around the seed's surface. Let's leave the seeds here to sprout new plants next year. Look how the seed fell on top of some dead mountain bellwort leaves. If we wait for the plant to follow its own timing with seed dispersal, we'll see the capsule begin to open at its tip. The dry sides spread apart at the ridges. You can just see the seeds within the capsule. And here are the seeds from this seed capsule, ready to be dropped to the ground. The dried seed capsule remains on the brittle plant stems throughout the fall and winter. Sometimes even the leaves will stay attached until the spring months, when you can find the dried stems and capsules from last year mixed in with this year's fresh blooms of mountain bellwort. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Uvularia puberula, also known as mountain bellwort. Visit identifythatplant.com for more images of mountain bellwort, for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.